Perfect. You're right. It brought a smile to our face. Yeah, no kidding. Right. Thanks. Chris Christie, uh, thanks, Heather. Chris Christie's not going to be happy about this because we're covering Donald Trump again. Last night he mentioned to Megyn Kelly he's not happy how much Trump coverage we're doing. But how can you deny the fact that one candidate goes down to Dallas and sells out an arena that, that holds 20,000 people at the invite of Mark Cuban, owner of the Dallas Mavericks, who also, by the way, is thinking to himself, I think I want to run for president if Donald Trump can do it. They healed their ways, and he stood up there without a teleprompter and addressed a very partisan crowd that was, had one thing in common. They all want Donald Trump to be president. It's disgusting what's happening to our country. We are a dumping ground for the rest of the world. They mentioned a little while ago, Scotty, about the silent majority. It's back, and it's not silent. I think we should call it, maybe we should call it the noisy the aggressive, the wanting to win, wanting to win majority. I like Carly, and I like Ben, and I like many of the people that I'm running against. I mean, many of these people are terrific people. But nobody's going to be able to do the job that I'm going to do. Nobody. They won't. We have to stop illegal immigration. We have to do it. We have to do it. All across the USA today, all the national polls, all the state polls show that Donald Trump is at the top of the Republican roster right now. In New Hampshire, he has 40 percent of the vote against the other Republicans. It's interesting. There's a woman uh, I was reading the Dallas Morning News this morning after the event last night, a woman by the name of Barbara Tomasina, former uh, elementary school teacher from Blano, Texas. She was wearing a dress and she was carrying a, a purse with Trump images all over it. And she said, quote, he's going to change America. Everybody wants someone other than a politician. And you know what? That's a kind of a focus group yep. to what the latest polls have shown, where they like the idea, America does, a majority, of somebody who does not have political experience. They're looking for these authentic candidates, which yep. Donald Trump, you know, it's, it's hard to ignore 20,000 people. You mentioned Governor Christie being upset about that, uh, about the amount of coverage that, that Donald Trump is getting and how he's dominating the headlines. Um, and Christie isn't the only one. We've heard that from some of the other sure. contenders as well. And, they're, you know, these guys have spent their lives in politics and they're frustrated. They've got this candidate who's zigging when everybody else is zagging, and they're, it's making their head spin. And in some ways, it's making some folks look desperate, according to Mark Thiessen. He says that if Donald Trump attacks GOP contenders while they're in the, the debate tomorrow night, going on the attack back is not necessarily the right move. I think what these candidates need to do, they're going to look desperate. Rand Paul looks desperate when he attacks Donald Trump. J Bobby Jindal looks desperate when he, when he attacks Donald Trump. These candidates have to be themselves. They have to make the case. You know, Jeb Bush has to say, here's my case for why I should be president. Here's how I'm going to shake up Washington. Scott Walker, John Kasich, they have to be themselves and present an alternative vision that is appealing the way Ben Carson did, or else they're going to look desperate. Well, Ben Carson, the Monmouth poll, uh, is up 12 points uh, in New Hampshire, 28 now to 17. But if you are Scott Walker and are taking on the unions, if you are Governor Christie and being straight talk and it's not resonating, what do you do? And as Governor Huckabee said, he said, you know, it's getting to the point where, you know, they're wondering when this whole thing's going to collapse. He's wondering when people are going to give a second look. So what are you supposed to do if you're, if you're your authentic self and you're still in single digits? Well, stand by. The big debate is tomorrow night, and Donald Trump's going to make a big uh, have have a big uh, message regarding national security tonight in California. Meanwhile, on the other side, could Hillary Clinton pick her husband Bill Clinton, former president, to join her as a running mate in 2016? Well, she's definitely thought about it. Kristen Fisher, live in Washington D.C., with what what Hillary Clinton had to say. Good morning, Kristen. Hey, good morning. Well, you know, in one of the few national interviews that Hillary Clinton has done since announcing her candidacy, yesterday she sat down with extras Mario Lopez. You know, everyone else has been asking her about her emails, her opponents, but Lopez asked about her husband. He wanted to know if she'd considered Bill Clinton as a running mate. Here's how she responded. He has served his two terms, and I think the argument would be as vice president, mm -hmm. it would not be possible for him to ever succeed to the position. At least that's what I've been told. So you know it, I, it has crossed my mind. 
Well, there you have it. Now, Clinton is coming off a full day of campaigning in Iowa, a state where a new CBS News poll shows Bernie Sanders beating her by 10 points. Nationally, she's still the front runner, but another new poll, this one from ABC and the Washington Post, shows she's lost a third of her support nationwide. She's still leading the pack at 42 percent, but that's a drop of more than 20 points since July, while Bernie Sanders has gained 10 points. Now, Clinton downplayed all this new data yesterday, saying it's way too early for these polls to really mean anything. And she's right, but they do show a troubling trend for her campaign. Next stop for Clinton, The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon tomorrow night. It'll be her first appearance on a late night show since entering the race. And what do you know, it just so happens to be the same night as the second GOP debate. No coincidence, I'm sure. Right, guys? That means seven people will be watching. Right. All right. <laughs> All right, Kristen, thank you very much. No, what she said, she's going to have it. to tape the Republican debate because she won't be able to watch it live. But she'll I'm sure she'll be very interested. Folks at home, we want to get your thoughts on this. It's a battle of the sexes type question, I guess. Putting your arm around your girlfriend, if you're a, a dude, is, is that sexist? Well, according to actress Helen Mirren, she says, men, you need to keep your hands off. Exactly. Here's what she says. It annoys me when I see men with an arm slung around their girlfriend's shoulders. It's like ownership, of course. Mm. When you're young, you want the guy to take your hand and look after you, but when I see girls being leaned on, I want to say, tell him to get his damned arm off your shoulder. Really? That's fascinating. I never thought about it. It means ownership. Uh, and she says it's sexist. You're right. I yeah. like I like it. I feel safe and secure. It's right. nice. You don't feel like you're being uh, owned? The curious somebody? thing is, that's her husband uh, with his hand on his wife. Uh, ironically. He doesn't own her. Just got a wrist. You know, uh, I know Helen's watching right now. Helen, to me, when you put your arm around your girl, uh, it's a sign of affection. It's a sign of connection. And uh, well, she might be cold. Could be cold. Could be cold. But regarding that opinion, Helen Mirren, America does not need a chaperone. Just saying. Right. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah. Free I, advice. I'm not taking her advice. It, I guess. Um, you know, I mean, even like when you're walking down the sidewalk with a man, it's nice when he's on the outside and you're on the inside. You just feel protected. But that's a sexist thing, right? Well, you shouldn't I'm the have one to feel saying protected. it. Okay. What do you think about it? Then. Uh, does, does that mean ownership? What does it mean to you? Friends at foxnews.com, or you could tweet us or Facebook. But the key is to put it around your girlfriend or your wife, not somebody else's. <laughs> right. That's the problem. Uh, that that's a, a totally thing. different story, right? Are you talking about an Ashley Madison that's kind of thing? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Ooh. That's a totally different thing. No kidding. <laughs> that's the slogan. No. All right.